In this video, we are gonna tackle the topic of hazard and awareness as part of the Study With Me series. Hi, I'm Dorian from Think To Success. In this video, we are going to tackle the category of hazard and awareness, not hazard perception, which is the videos. This is hazard awareness in question form. As I normally do with the Study With Me series, I'm gonna do 20 question mock tests, breaking it down, show you hints, tips along the way to help you pass your theory test first time. So let me jump over to my desktop and get started. So first question is what should you do as you approach this overhead bridge? So my advice with when they show you images is always read the question first and then look at the images rather than read the question, go looking for the answer and then try to take the details out of the image if there's any details to be taken out. So in this case, you've got high vehicles and you've got a reduced space and a low bridge. The low bridge doesn't affect you as a car driver, but it affects higher vehicles. So the question says, what should you do as you approach this overhead bridge? So technically anything that's tall, lorries, buses are gonna be driving in the middle of the road. There's gonna be a wind of any high-sided vehicles, lorries, buses coming down the middle of the road. So that's what we're looking for, something along those lines. So move out to the center of the road before going through. Like I said, the height doesn't affect you, so you don't need to drive down the middle of the road. And then for those of you taking driving lessons, you know you should be about a meter away from the curb or park cars, give or take. Be prepared to give way to large vehicles in the middle of the road. Yep, that's what we discussed. Find another route. This one's only for high vehicles. No, move across to the right-hand side of the road. Move across to the right-hand side before going through. And if you move across to the right hand side, you're on the wrong side of the road. So again, it can't be safe. So remember the theory test is always about the safety factor. Why are place names painted on the road surface? So um, place names are painted on the road surface to give you an indication of where you're going nice and early so you can change lanes nice and early. Um, so that's what we're looking for, something along those lines. To restrict the flow of traffic, no. To warn of oncoming traffic, no. To help you select the correct lane in good time, yes. To prevent you from changing lanes, no. What should the driver of a grey car be especially aware of? So remember, read the question, then look at the images and see what you can get from that. So the road is narrow, cars are parked up on both sides. So the driver of the grey car could be aware of children running in between or coming out between parked cars, someone opening the car door. So those are two things that you need to be aware of. So traffic falling behind, you don't, you need to be aware of traffic falling behind, but it's not gonna be an issue in this situation. Um, the uneven road surface, no. Empty parking spaces, no. Doors opening on parked cars, yeah, because people may not be checking their blind spots and obviously because the road's narrow, if someone opens their car door, it's gonna affect you massively. What type of vehicle could you expect to meet in the middle of the road? So always read the question and then look at the image, as I said earlier on. Now, if you read the question and look at the image, that's similar to the question we had before. Now, this, for those of you who are new to the channel, the questions on the theory test can come up similar questions, similar image, word is slightly different, which is going to give you sometimes a different answer. Now, this is why I say to all my pupils that I teach, never memorize the question, never memorize the answer. Because if the word is slightly different, then you're going to be struggling. But if you understand the question, what they're asking, and you understand the answer, you're always going to pass anyway. So with this question here, where it says, what type of vehicle could you expect to meet in the middle of the road? It goes back to, if you remember from the first question, high side vehicles. Now in a real test, they can word it as high sided vehicles or they can um, make individuals so as in a lorry or a bus. So you're looking for one of those three answers, either high sided, lorry or a bus. So in this case, we're talking car, no, lorry, yes, bicycle, no, motorcycle, no. Why should the junction on the left be kept clear. So again, looking at the image, the junction on the left, there's traffic. And for those of you not taking driving lessons, you should always leave junctions clear to allow cars to go in and come out. It's unfair to be blocking the junction and they can't go because you can't go. So always leave junctions clear where possible. So to allow vehicles to enter and emerge. And again, emerging is coming out. Like I said, it's about understanding the question, understanding the answers. When this comes up on the test, not every pupil knows what emerging is, especially if not taking driving lessons. Emerging is coming out of the giveaway line. That's that answer. But all, always read the following answers, like I always say, because sometimes you get the same answer, but with a bit more information in it, which is obviously the one that you're going to be looking for. To allow vehicles to make a U-turn, no. To allow vehicles to park, no. You're behind this cyclist. When the traffic lights change, what should you do? So again, look at the image, it's red. Cyclist is in front in the cycle area a bit. 
and you would be behind the white line which would be here so tap your horn and drive through first no try to move off before the cyclist no can't be safe remember the safety factor turn the right but give the cyclist room no allow the cyclist time and room and that's the safest factor always allow cyclists time and, and room especially when they're starting to move off because they tend to wobble a little bit before they go following a slower moving vehicle what should you do if there's a junction just ahead on the right let me just read that again you are following a slower moving vehicle so the vehicle in front's going slower what should you do if there's a junction just ahead on the right if there's a junction ahead on the right and you're going behind a slower moving vehicle stay behind the slower moving vehicle because if you move out that could suggest you're turning right rather than overtaking so stay behind that's the safest option so we're looking for something along those lines overtake after checking your mirrors and signaling no only consider overtaking when you pass the junction yeah when you pass the junction then there's no misunderstanding it means you're overtaking rather than are you turning right or overtaking so it's going to be that one for now accelerate quickly once it's got accelerate quickly it's going to be wrong um, but i'll read the full answer accelerate quickly to overtake before reaching the junction um safety factor once you got quickly in there it's going to be wrong slow down and, and prepare to overtake on the left and you shouldn't be undertaking on the left you should always be overtaking on the right so it's going to be the answer that we ticked you're about to drive your car what should you do if you can't find the glasses you need to wear there is a minimum eyesight check that you should do on the driving test and obviously if you pass your driving test wearing glasses you need them to um, you need to be wearing them all the time when you drive so if you can't find your glasses technically you shouldn't be driving um, so drive home slowly keep keeping to the quiet roads no drive home at night so the lights will help you no find the way of getting home without driving it's going to be that one because it's illegal to drive out your glasses if you pass your driving test with glasses and borrow friends glasses and use those and answer it's going to be no to that you're approaching a crossroads what should you do if your traffic lights have failed let's read that one again you are approaching a crossroads what should you do if a traffic lights have failed right a crossroads a crossroads is going to be sort of going up and across and obviously you normally have traffic lights stopping these traffic going if these guys are going and then when the lights go to green for these guys these guys would be stopping if that all makes sense on camera right so if the traffic lights aren't working it means there's nobody has priority basically a free for all so you need to go with caution carefully it depends what answer they're going to give us which i don't know yet so you're looking for something on the lights or going carefully or cautiously along those lines because i repeat if the traffic lights aren't working at a crossroads it's a free for all nobody has priority in that so be prepared to stop for any traffic it's possible brake and stop only for large vehicles it's not going to be that one in terms of safety be prepared to break sharp once again once it's got sharply in the answer it's going to be wrong can't be safe you're going to break sharply break sharp to stop before looking again it's got sharp in the answer so be prepared to stop for any traffic because again you're going to be careful and be safe if you're prepared to stop and let people go and go only when it's safe for you to go you're driving on this dual carriageway why may you need to slow down again read the question look at the image it's got roadworks and it says a mile delay possible in a mile distance and that's the reason why you're slowing down roadworks triangles if you didn't know are warnings and i have got a video in the playlist of traffic signs if you haven't watched that one so i suggest you go and watch that one next if you haven't done your road signs um there's no footpath that's not the right answer there are roadworks ahead of you yep in a mile there's roadworks there's a broken white line in the center which is fine to have broken white lines and the broken white lines if you, again if you didn't know are hazard lines these ones are hazard lines there's other white lines but these ones are hazard lines and there are solid white lines on either side and again if you didn't know solid white lines marks the edge of the carriageway so this marks the edge of the carriageway so it's going to be that one you take some cough medicine given to you by a friend what should you do before driving your car you take some cough medicine given to you by a friend what should you do before driving your car interesting okay ask your friend if taking a medicine affected their driving medicines affect everybody differently side effects affects um, people differently so you asking that's not going to change anything drink some strong coffee an hour before driving definitely not drive a short distance to see if the medicine is affecting your driving just driving a short distance could be detrimental to your driving so that's going to be no check the label to see the medicine will affect your driving there you go check the label to see if it's going to affect your driving um some medication does does say on the on on it do not 
forked drive, do not operate heavy machinery. Cars come under heavy machinery. So always check medication if you are um, being prescribed it. How can drinking alcohol affect your ability to drive or ride? Drinking alcohol affects your ability. This comes up um, a bit as well. It gives you more confidence um, when you drink alcohol. Um, using examples when people drink a lot, they always get into fight, not always, but gets into fight because they're a lot more confident taking on um, a whole um, room of people basically. So alcohol gives you a bit more confidence, but it slows your reaction time down. And obviously for driving, you need to be alert when you are driving. So alcohol can give you more confidence or um, reduce your reaction time. So we're looking for something along the lines for those two. All right, just read the question again. How can drinking alcohol affect your ability to drive or ride? Your awareness or your awareness of danger will be improved and no, your confidence will be reduced. No, alcohol gives you a bit more confidence. Your ability to judge speed will be reduced. Your ability to judge speed will be reduced. Yep, your reactions will be faster. Your actions is not going to be faster. As I mentioned earlier, it's going to be slower. So it's going to be that one. You're going to struggle to judge speed and distance. What's the main hazard to the driver of the red car arrowed should be aware of? So breaking it down, what's the main hazard of the red car? So let's isolate the red car. So there's the red car. And what should he be aware of? With the bus being there, you should be aware of people walking around the front of the bus. That's going to be an issue. Or it could be the bus moving off, depending on how the ferry system on the word it. But the chances are it's going to be people walking in front of the bus. So looking for something along those lines. If a bus may move out into the road, again, possible. If a black car may stop suddenly, no. Glare from the sun may affect driver's vision, no. Oncoming vehicles will assume the driver's turning right, no. So it's the bus moving out. So remember on the ferry test, like I said, it can word it either way. That's why I say understand it. So in this case, it's the bus moving off. Um, they can ask you the same question, but give the option of pedestrians walking out in front of the bus. So be aware when you're taking your test. Now, what should you do if a doctor prescribes drugs that are likely to affect your driving? Um, similar question to the one before. So the doctor's giving you medication. So it's similar. Let's see if they give you the same answer. So let's read the question again. What should you do if a doctor prescribes drugs that are likely to affect your driving? Get someone else to drive. Possible someone else who's driving is not you. Never drive at more than 30 miles an hour. No. Avoid driving on motorways. No. Only drive if someone is with you. So yeah, get someone else to drive because you're not driving at all. So it's got to be the safest option of all of them. And again, I will stress because this is coming up a lot. Question similar to the friend giving you medicine, different answer. And that's the reason why you do not memorize the questions. Do not memorize the answer. Understand what they're asking. Understand what their answers are going to be. You have a better chance of passing your ferry test first time. What should you do for traffic in the left-hand lane is slow? And just read that. What should you do if the traffic in the left-hand lane is slowing down? I will add as well, I tend to read the question two or three times, especially if it's a long type of question, because I have a mild case of dyslexia. And I do repeat, if you have dyslexia, read the questions, read the answers very, very carefully. There's no need to go quickly. If you didn't know, you have 57 minutes in total to do the question side of it. If you want to, you can use headphones. The headphones are supplied to you at the ferry test center. So you can pull it on and have the questions read to you. Most of my pupils who declare they've got dyslexia on the course, um, I get them to train to use headphones. So when they go in there on the real test, it's the same thing they'll be doing in the classroom. You want to study the way you're going to take the real test. So if you want to wear headphones, practice studying with using headphones. But as I said, if you've got dyslexia, depending on how um, serious it is, use headphones, have the questions read to you, have the answers read to you, and you can have it read to you as many times as you need to through the headphones. Like I said, my dyslexia is mild, so I just tend to read the question two or three times if I have to, because sometimes when I read it the first time, it doesn't make sense even though I've read it. So going back to the question, just reading it once more. What should you do if the traffic in the left-hand lane is slowing down? So we're going to choose the safest option out of all four. Slow down, keeping a safe separation distance. That's possible. It's safest at the moment. Pull up on the left-hand verge. No. Accelerate past the vehicle. No. Move across and continue in the right-hand lane. Again, no. So that's going to be the answer. What should you do about driving if you've been taking medicine that causes drowsiness? Right. Again, that's how the ferry test works. Pops up three questions about medication, to be honest. What should you do about driving if you've been taking medication that causes drowsiness? Let's see what answer they give us to choose out of. Ask someone to come with you. You're still driving. So that's not a safe option. Only drive if your journey is necessary. Again, you're still driving if it's necessary. Avoid driving and check with your doctor. That's going to be the safest option and drive on quiet roads. So it's going to be that one. You've been involved in an argument that that's made you feel angry. What should you do before starting your journey? Calm down. Um, that's road rage. It's another way 
way of them saying road rage. If you have, are angry with whatever situation, try and calm down before driving because it does come through in your driving as well. So that's something you need to be aware of once you pass your driving test or even your driving lessons. If you have the argument with someone um, before your driving lesson, before your instructor turns up, try and calm down or let your instructor know so he can do something, get the lesson, cater the lesson to you. Right, so calm down first one out. Have an alcoholic drink, you know you shouldn't be doing that. Open a window, no, and turn on your radio, no. You're invited to a pub lunch. What should you do if you know that you will have to drive in the evening? You're invited to a pub lunch. What should you do if you know that you have to drive in the evening? Don't drink. Um, but we'll see what options they give us. Um, have some milk before drinking alcohol, no. Eat a hot meal with your alcoholic lunch, no. Don't drink any alcohol, that's the safest. Do not drink. Avoid mixing your alcoholic drink. Safest option is do not drink. What should you do if you become tired while you're driving on the motorway? What should you do if you become tired while driving on the motorway? Find somewhere to get some rest and that's going to be in a service station. You never stop on the motorway to get a rest. So it's going to be a service station of some kind. Um, and like I said, the fairy test word, words questions differently, give you different answers. The other option they can do on the real test is put your window down, get some fresh air. Um, that can make you get a little bit awake. Um, so pull up on the hard shoulder and change drivers. You should never be pulling up on the hard shoulder, only for emergencies only. Close all your windows and set the heating to warm. That's gonna make you even more drowsy. Leave the motorway the next exit and rest. It says leave the motorway the next exit. It doesn't say service station, but it's a possibility. So I'm gonna tick that. Increase your speed and turn the radio. Again, increasing your speed. If you're already doing 70 miles and then increase your speed, you're breaking the speed limit. So it can't be that one. So that's the safest one out of all of them. And what must you do at this juncture? Again, read the question, look at the sign, stop, stop on the floor and officially stop line. So you should be stopping. If For those of you not taking driving lessons or those of you taking dri driving lessons, if you didn't know, you need to stop at a stop line. If it says stop, you have to stop by law, even if it is safe to go. So in this case, we're looking for stop. You want to be very careful as well with this. Um, this comes up in terms of a Pelican Crossing question as well, as well as the stop sign. Let me just explain. They normally give you two similar answers. One is stop behind the line, which is what you're looking for stop behind the line and the other one is stop beyond the line very subtle in the reading so one is stop behind that's what you're looking for because you're behind the line and the other one is stop beyond the line it means you've gone too far and i will repeat in the real test they can bring that one up in this type of question and also at the pelican crossing one so read it very carefully very subtle difference stop behind the line at a point where you can see clearly so it's beyond the line so the answer is no stop only if there's traffic on the main Main road answers no stop behind the line then edge four to see clearly so this one's behind the line that's the one you want and stop only if you're turning right again that's the one you are looking for so behind the line not beyond the line so there you have it another pass hopefully you got some benefit from that if you did like comment subscribe share it with your friends who are also studying with their fairy test um youtube's going to recommend another video here i'm going to recommend the playlist here so go off and watch which one is suitable for you and i will catch you in the next video or the next category